And we are live. Good morning, good afternoon. Hello and welcome to Look Good, Feel Better. So excited to be here. I'm Yota Batsaras, a very proud Look Good, Feel Better national trainer for the past 10 years. And I'm delighted you're here for today's workshop. Hi, everyone. All right, so in a few moments, we will be joined by a very special guest. But before we begin, I would like to take a quick moment to introduce you to the Look Good, Feel Better program. So just a reminder, in a very short moment, we will be joined by a very special guest, Ellen Hildebrand. I'm very excited to meet with her. But a little bit more about the Look Good, Feel Better program now that you're here. So for more than 30 years, Look Good, Feel Better has provided free workshops to people with cancer to help them manage the appearance-related side effects of their treatment. Our professional beauty volunteers provide lessons on skin and nail care, cosmetics, wigs, turbans and head coverings, accessories, and styling. We address the apparent side effects of cancer treatment because it's not only uplifting. Studies have shown that helping people reassert control over how they look can truly impact how they feel. Confidence and self-esteem improve after every Look Good, Feel Better workshop, and I've been super honored to be able to see it myself. So today, Look Good, Feel Better actually operates in 27 countries around the world. Our program is open to all women with cancer who are undergoing chemotherapy, radiation, or other forms of treatment. So if you or someone you love would benefit from attending a workshop, please visit lookgoodfeelbetter.org for more information on our live virtual workshop schedule. So while the pandemic kept us all safely at home, our live virtual platform allow us, allowed us to stay connected to women undergoing cancer treatment. That experience is what inspired this new undertaking, our Feel Better sessions. I think we can all agree that we are well overdue for a little bit more hope and positivity. So that's what today is all about, taking a little time to feel a whole lot better. So one more quick note before I introduce our very special guest. We are delighted to announce that today we'll be gifting three signed copies of Ellen's latest novel, Golden Girl, to three participants. I'm really excited about this book, as a matter of fact. Anyone who makes a $10 donation to Look Good, Feel Better during our time together is eligible to win. Ellen's Golden Girls hit shelves on June 1st, so you will get a sneak peek copy and you can click the donate button below or text feel good to 44321. Please don't forget to include your email address so we can tell you when you've won. All right, let's see here. I want to find Ellen. All right. Hi. Hi Hello, everyone. It's so Yay. nice to meet you. May I do a quick intro on all your achievements? Now Go ahead. Can... Oh, thank you. So here is Ellen Hildebrand, everybody, an author and cancer survivor, a very inspiring woman at that, and a creator of the community, an amazing creator of a community. Her more than 20 novels set on the beaches of Nantucket Island have become more than just best-selling summertime reads. And I'm telling you, I'm really excited for this one that's coming out. They've inspired a fiercely loyal community of dedicated fans who appreciate the escapism, but more importantly, relate to Ellen and her own life story. So a breast cancer survivor and a mother of three, three very devoted mother of three, Ellen has inspired countless women to face life's toughest challenge with grace, strength, and full hearts. About her own cancer diagnosis, Ellen has said, what I remember about my reaction is that every moment that had come before that phone call seemed carelessly squandered and every moment in front of me seemed unspeakably precious. There is one gift that a cancer diagnosis gives and it's a new understanding of how precious life is. Wow. So she's developed a community that um, is called Mama Strong. It brings women together to share, learn, and find strength through connection. Today, Ellen is about to release her latest novel, Golden Girl, which comes out on June 1st. And without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce you all to the wonderful Ellen Hildebrand to today's Feel Better session. Ellen, welcome, and thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, uh, I'm overwhelmed. Honestly, that was such a beautiful introduction. And I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Um, I'm going to just start by noting that this week 
marks the seventh anniversary of my diagnosis. It was a hard week, obviously, in 2014. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I was diagnosed on the 21st of, of May. Uh, so the, I'll just sort of take you through my journey. And then please, please. if people have questions, we can I can answer questions. Absolutely. Um, when I started my journey, I was half an A cup. So, I mean, super duper small. And I felt a lump uh, myself. And it felt like a little tiny pebble underneath my skin. I was in St. John in the Virgin Islands at the time that I found it. I immediately texted my best friend, Margie. She's a nurse practitioner at Mass General in Boston. And she said, it's probably just a calcified milk duct. Don't worry about it, but have it checked out when you get home. Mm -hmm. So when I got home, I made an appointment at the Nantucket Hospital. The doctor scheduled me for a mammogram. The mammogram showed nothing, which was so strange um, because we could feel it. Like the technician could feel it. I could feel it. Did not show up on the mammogram. They dropped a little marker into it that was like the size of a pen tip and the marker didn't show up. So at that point I had to have an ultrasound. So I had an ultrasound um, and they determined that I had, uh, that that was a, um, some, a mass and they biopsied it. And then they called me on the 21st of May and said, you have breast cancer. Mm. So probably a lot of people that I'm talking, I'm sorry, I'm going to cry. Please, I'm fine. Okay. I, I may cry during this. I will recover. Um, it's just like, those are not the words that you want to hear anyway. I was very much like this. I was, I took the call. I was so shocked. I took the call. I was jogging. And then there I am on the streets of Nantucket. I mean, I can picture it like it was yesterday. I'm on the streets of Nantucket and someone's like, you have breast cancer. And I just stopped and I just, and then I just started bawling. Um, anyway, on Nantucket, you're, you're shuttled to Mass General in Boston, which, yeah, you know, in my humble opinion, is just the best hospital in the entire world. And I met with my um, oncological surgeon, a woman named Dr. Michelle Specht. Okay, so Dr. Specht, I'm totally terrified. My mother's there, my sister's there. Dr. Specht walks into the office and it's like a doctor from television. She's beautiful, she's blonde, she's wearing like Christian Louboutin, she's wearing like a Chanel suit, like Christian Louboutin heels in her, uh, with, with her little white jacket. I mean, she's the most, and she's so sweet and nice and kind and reassuring. And I was just, you know, once you meet, once I met her, I was like, I'm, I'm going to be okay. I, you know, I think I felt better. I felt better. So she says, okay, you know, you have this lump and we're going to do radiation and a lumpectomy and then we're going to do radiation. But before we do that, I want you to have an ultrasound to make sure there's nothing else hiding. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm half an A cup. Like there's nothing else hiding. So I'm feeling very relaxed when I'm in the MRI get home to Nantucket, she calls the next day and says, okay, you have four tumors in your right breast and one in your left. So they found all these things that they have not seen. And now we're looking at a double mastectomy. And uh, she said, and I have more bad news. Uh, they do not make implants as small as you are. So you're going to have to go bigger, which was sort of like the funny silver lining. So it's like, okay, I'm going as big as, <laughs> as big as reasonably possible. Um, so I had a book coming out called The Matchmaker and it was coming out on June 10th. And I said to Michelle, can we schedule the double mastectomy for like August or after my book comes out? And she was like, absolutely not. It has to be as soon as possible. Um, so we scheduled it for June 13th. Meanwhile, I had this book coming out June 10th. Normally when I have a book come out, I go on tour for two weeks so I had to cancel a bunch of events. And at that point, I thought, I'm just going to have to tell people what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a piece for the Huffington Post saying that, you know, I had written it in my novel, The Matchmaker. Ironically, the woman gets cancer. And I had done all this research and met with oncologists. And I was growing my hair out for locks of love. And I mean, I was really like doing that for my book research. All of a sudden, the patient is now me. Um, and so I wrote a piece about that for the Huffington Post. Someone at CBS News saw it. Gail King called and said, we'd like to have you on <sighs> the day before your operation. And so I did that. Like, I flew to New York. I can't believe I, like, when I'm telling you this, I just cannot believe I did this. 
I flew to New York. I went on the morning news, the CBS this morning with, at that time it was Gail, Nora, and Charlie Rose. And, you know, told my story about how I'd written this novel. And now I myself was having, you know, double mastectomy the next day. And then 24 hours later, I was in Boston. My sister came and stayed with me the night before. And uh, I went to Bass General and I had a double mastectomy. Um, and Gail emailed me the next day and asked how I was doing. And I said, you know, it feels like I have concrete breasts tied on with barbed wire. I mean, it was, it was painful. Um, and I went through the reconstruction over the course of the summer. And all of that went fine. I did not have to have chemotherapy, for which I was grateful. My medical oncologist, Steve Isakov, one of my favorite people in the whole universe, said no chemo. And he, then they decided against radiation as well. Um, I had caught, we had caught this, despite the fact that I had so many tumors, we had caught it in the early stages. Um, and so I went through my reconstruction and then I had the expanders taken out. And those of you who are watching, a lot of you know what this means. I had the expanders taken out and I had um, my implants put in. I had a cut on my finger, which nobody paid any attention to, but the cut got infected and somehow the infection got into my incision and 10 days after my surgery, where I thought I was all finished, 10 days after my surgery, all of a sudden I am so, so sick. I, I basically, it was my, so I'm divorced and my ex-husband and I like to have lunch on our anniversary and it was our anniversary. And he called me and he's like, what time are we going to lunch? And I said to him, I can't, I cannot go to lunch because I'm, I'm, I'm too sick. And he thought, I think he thought I was blowing him off. And thank God, thank God he showed up at my cottage and basically like broke down the door because I was passed out cold in my bed. He sort of threw me over his shoulder, took me to the hospital. They admitted me, uh, burning up with fever. Oh my God. They put me on the last line hospital antibiotics, like the heaviest thing that they had. And they were like, we have to send you to Boston. So that requires a helicopter. Like I had to go that second. Um, and they said, but before we send you to Boston, you should say goodbye to your children. Jeez. My kids at that time are 14, 12 and eight. So I had my best friend go get them at school brought them to my hospital room. And I said to them, I'm not sure what's going to happen here, but I want you to know that I will never leave you. Oh my goodness. And I wasn't really sure what I meant by that, but it's so funny because it really ties in with my novel Golden Girl, which is coming out on June 1st. That novel is an exploration of what I meant by that. But I said to them, I will never leave you. So I go to uh, Boston Medical Center, they whisk me into the operating room. They, they take out my left implant. That's where the infection was centered. And so I spent three months and, and this is sort of where I, I'm very in touch with the mission of your organization is I spent three months with a D cup on one side and a flat to the bone on the other side. And it, and it was very demoralizing. I mean, it was, you know, I felt uneven. I had an I had like a puff, first I had like a puffy, falsy, and then I was going to Atlanta's with the kids over Christmas, and so I got one that was like waterproof, mm -hmm. and every time we went down the water slide, it would fly out, and one of the kids would have to get the, you know, the thing and give it back to me, and I'd stick it back in my bathing suit, and, you know, they'd be throwing it at each other, and I'm like, okay, this, you know, this is just, <laughs> this is just awful. Um, but funny. I mean, we, we made fun of it and the kids were, they called me the Unibooper. I mean, it was hilarious, <laughs> but, um, then, you know, I spent the entire winter being reconstructed yet again on the left side again, again, again. And then in May of 2015, I had the implant replaced and, and I'm happy to say that seven years later, I'm healthy and I'm whole. And, um, I, I, I want to, end this part of the story with two things that people told me. So the first one is I went to an event in Chicago and I went, hit my, my oncological surgeon was verklempt because basically she said, when I was having my double mastectomy, she said, 
can you give me four to six weeks of rest? And I said, um, no, you know, my book is out. I said, I can give you two weeks of rest. And 12 days after my double mastectomy, I flew to Chicago to do two events. And I was, I still had drains in, I was on oxy. I mean, I was not, you know, looking back at this from a distance, I'm thinking, what on earth was I thinking? Um, and I went to uh, the first event, which was a straight signing. I have zero memory of it. And then I went to a luncheon, second day. And it was at the, it was in Cook County somewhere. And it was a brown bag luncheon in a room at a library. And there were a hundred women there and everybody had their little lunches. And in the front were these two women. And um, one of them had no hair and one of them had very short hair and like, sh like almost shaved. And they, I was, my eye was drawn to them and they came through the line and they said, um, you know, we both had double mastectomies together. We've been through 36 rounds of chemo and 64 rounds of radiation. And we came to your book signing today, Ellen, to tell you that you're going to be fine. Mm. And what I realized at that moment is there was, you know, a community of women out there who were far sicker than I was, who was, who were fighting this disease just in the most graceful and brave way possible. And that really inspired me. And I thought, okay, these two people have passed me a baton. I'm not sad. I don't know why I'm crying. I'm sorry. Um, it's, a, it's a tough journey, <laughs> Helen. You did this. This is amazing. And it just shows how dedicated you are. And there's so many viewers right now that are identifying with how real you're being. And they're just, you know, they, they really love you. And um, yeah. please I mean, continue. Okay. So they passed me a baton and it's my job, you know, to tell you out there that you're going to be okay. You will be okay. And I'm not even sure I believed them. But anyway, I am okay. And I am grateful that they, that they showed up. And I thought, you know, they've been all through this and they're at this silly book signing. And so, you know, I was very happy about that. Okay, second thing is uh, I, have a, I had a friend who worked at the independent bookstore here in Nantucket and she sent me a text. And the text said, and she was a seven-year survivor. She's basically where I am now. She's a seven-year survivor. Her kids were in their early 20s as, my, as, as mine are now. And she said to me, uh, if I had my life to live over, Ellen, I would take the cancer again because of what it has taught me. Hmm. And I thought to myself, okay, wow, that's a huge statement. But I will tell you that now, seven years out, I would take it again. Because it is only in facing that which threatens your very being that you learn what it means to be alive. Yeah. And so that is my, that is my story. I'm sorry I cried. Um, Thank you. And I'm happy, I'm happy to take questions if anybody has them. We have a ton, we have a ton. I mean, it, it was hard to jot them down. So Ellen, um, please tell me, tell me about Mama Strong. Really okay, so that. my publisher, I mean, I can't even describe how fabulous my publisher was. My publisher was so fabulous. They were supportive and beyond, beyond. And they created an initiative called Mama's, hashtag Mama Strong. That's mm -hmm. what my daughter said before I went into surgery. Um, and uh, th if you go to the Mama Strong section of my website and, and write to them, they will send a box of my backlist to your treatment center. I have heard from so many women who have been like, it was my darkest day. I, I was starting chemo. I took one of your books and it just sort of transported me. The biggest compliment I've ever received. And, I, and, and I've heard it again and again, but I, I am so, so humbled, you know, that in people's like scariest hour that they're gonna reach for my books. But um, I'm glad that they provide that kind of escape. What an achievement. Okay, so what do you hope to provide women out there who are on their own health and per personal journey journeys? Well, you have to trust your doctors. I mean, okay, okay, like two things are like, trust your doctors, right? I had the benefit of being in an incredibly great hospital with the, just the best doctors. And I, I am still in touch with them personally, you know, because Mass General is still raising money for the cancer center and I, I do everything I can for them. Um, trust your doctors and take your antibiotics. <laughs> Just take your antibiotics. It's, it's, um, that's very important. A lot of times it's not even the cancer that will get you. It's 
like weird other things that happen. Interesting. Thank you. Your experience with your storytelling. So all of this, I mean, you kind of briefly touched on it, but what would you say is that biggest takeaway of how your experience has changed your storytelling? Well, I think, I mean, it really, when something like this happens to you at the beginning of middle age, so I was 44 when I got, got diagnosed. And like I said, my kids were 14, 12 and eight. And I was sort of embarking on like a different, you know, they were little for so long and they were, you know, it was really a headache. You know, as we know, people with young kids, it's like a lot of, of physical, it's like a lot of physical work. Um, and they were sort of moving and I, and, and I just felt myself mature. Like I, and I let go of all the things that bothered me in my thirties and forties. Like I used to have friend squabbles, squabbles and I, I would, you know, feel, I don't know, jealous or, or envious or whatever, all of that, like all of the little stuff, like I no longer cared. The things that mattered to me became very few and very important. Like what was important? Like the kids were important. My health was important. My friends were important, but all the other stuff, I just let it like the white noise. I just let it go. And I have maintained that to age 51, seven years. I just, and I'm so much happier. I just don't worry about the things that don't matter. That's amazing. Can you please tell us about your last novel, your latest novel, Golden Girl? Yes. So I mentioned it just briefly. So Golden Girl yes. is about, it's about uh, a Nantucket beach novelist named Vivian Howe. And she <laughs> is killed on page one in a hit and run. She's, she's jogging and she gets hit by a car. She ascends <laughs> into the beyond. So she goes up to heaven and she's assigned an administrator named Martha. And Martha says, you know what? That was really unfair. Um, so I'm going to let you watch what happens below for the summer and you can use three nudges to influence outcomes below. So Vivi has three children who are young adults and she has an ex-husband and a boyfriend and, and her best friend. And so she can watch everything. She watches her own funeral. Like she watches everything happening and she has to judiciously use her nudge the nudges that Martha has granted her so that she can sort of nudge people towards a happy ending. Interesting. I'm really excited to get my hands on that one. So, and everyone can um, have an opportunity to win a copy, an early sneak peek by texting or pushing the donating button, the donate button here on our site. Please remember to include your email. Ellen, any final message for the Look and Feel Better community? Well, I want to say this. People think that cancer takes something away and it, it most certainly does, but it gives you something back. And what it gives you back is everybody, I can see 160 people on this, on this Instagram live. That is what it gives you. It gives you a community of the strongest, most amazing women you will ever know. And so I would encourage anybody who's on this journey to find another person to connect with, because that, that is how you make it through. Yes. Thank you for that. So now our community has some questions here. They want to know about your Instagram cooking show. What are you cooking these days? <laughs> so you guys, okay, that's so funny. So I do like this cook, this very strange cooking show called Cringe Cooking. And it's called Cringe Cooking because my children are so embarrassed by it that when I started it last year, my son Dawson was like, this is so cringe. You have to please stop. And I'm like, no, I'm going to call it the Cringe Cooking Show. So, um, I, you know, I cook my favorite recipes and I video myself and, and I haven't put up a lot of recipes recently. I am so, so busy with the launch of this book. Um, I have with the local bookstore, I'm signing 4,000 copies and personalizing, and that's taking hours and hours and hours of my week. So, and then I'm going on tour. So I'm one of the only people going on an in-person tour. I leave on Monday. I'm going on CBS this morning with Gail on Tuesday. Okay. So uh, hopefully I won't cry there. Um, but, uh, and I'm gone for two weeks all across the country. So I, it'll be the mid June before we see cringe cooking return, but return it will. That is so funny. We have so many questions, but so little time, but Ellen, can you please tell us before you go? Um, where are the various places that we can follow you online and find your books? Okay, so books are available everywhere. Okay. Um, I will say that this particular Golden Girl is has three sort of special editions. You can contact Nantucket Book Partners okay. to get a signed personalized copy. Um, 
Barnes and Noble is going to have a copy with an essay called the 10 best books of my first 50 years, which is my 10 favorite books of all time. And the target edition, which I sort of think is so much fun, has an essay called, so how much of this book is true anyway? And that has recipes included in that essay um, because there I use my own personal recipes in the book Golden Girl. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram at Ellen Hildebrand or my Facebook page, Ellen Hildebrand Writer. And I stay away from Twitter, although I do have a Twitter at Ellen Hildebrand. But I mean, I think Instagram is best. Okay, very simple. And then one last question here from a, from a community member. Nantucket seems like an idyllic place to live in the summer, but how do you find the winters? So, I mean, the winters are challenging or can be challenging. When the kids were growing up, they're all athletes. So it was a lot of basketball games. And, and you really get consumed, just like I'm sure you guys do at home with your kids' sports and their activities. Mm -hmm. um, and so many, many winters passed happily with us watching a lot of basketball. Um, and then recently, um, I've been going to St. John in the Virgin Islands for five weeks. So that sort of is a nice chunk of time in the winter that I get away. And then when I return, you know, it's almost spring, which is wonderful. Okay. Ellen, you shared so much strength and so much information and, and gave us a really amazing peek into your life as an amazing woman, mother, and, and, and entrepreneur and author. Um, we've learned so much. And on behalf of the entire Look Good Feel Better family, we're so grateful for you and for sharing awesome. everything that you have you and your support. So and we thank, I thank everybody. Thank you. Thank everybody for, you know, your audience who's also been here with us today. Hopefully everybody gets to watch on replay and we hope this was time well spent. We also want to remind everyone that they can enter for a chance to win one of your amazing books if they donate $10 to look good, feel better during this session. Not to forget your email, please. Or they can text feel good to 44321. So we're going to thank you, Ellen, for being here and best of luck on tomorrow morning and you're thank you. <laughs> we can't thank you enough oh you're so welcome all right guys i'll talk to you later bye-bye now